You'd have to search high and low to find a day as flat as this one on Wall Street. The Dow finished up 14 points to close at 25,516. The S&P 500 down two to end the day at 27.98. And the NASDAQ down five points to finish at 7,637. Market analysis now. Jim Lowell is the chief investment officer at Advisor Investments and the editor of FidelityInvestor.com. He's in the newsroom. Hi, Jim. Hey, Brian. So to say this is there was no reaction to the Mueller report. Well, was Friday the reaction to the Mueller report? No, Friday was the reaction to uh, renewed fears of slowing global growth and the potential impact they might have on a recession here inside of the U.S. And that's going to be a theme that really the market's going to have to contend with, not just in 2019, but as we head into 2020 as well. Uh, that said, uh, the market had already, I think, priced in a very optimistic and hopeful outcome from the Mueller investigation. Don't forget, we're up about 15 percent year to date. And so effectively, the market got what it had hoped to hear. It didn't know it was going to hear it, but it got what it hoped to hear. And as a result, it effectively just ended up sitting on its hands today. All right. So that being the case, what are uh, we're, we're trying to figure out time a recession that may or may not be on the horizon. What are investors looking at as they try to do that? There's something that signaled uh, prior recessions with a good degree of accuracy. It's called an inversion of the yield curve. That occurred on Friday, but there are all kinds of variables that go into interpreting whether or not uh, it has predictive power, not the least of which is the fact that since the Great Recession 2008 to, uh, in 2009, we saw not just our Fed ride to the market's rescue and the economy's rescue with massive stimulus, but coordinate a global effort to do so. And so that is a new feature heading into whatever the next recession will be. It doesn't mean the Fed can avoid recessions forever, but it probably means it'll be like stepping on a splinter as opposed to on a nail. Yeah, because in the past, as you say, that hasn't happened. So this uh, inversion curve, this inversion key, that, that may not be predictive as it was in the past. It, is that possible? It absolutely is possible. It's possible that it's not going to be as predictive. Uh, I hate to say it's going to be different this time, but it just may end up being so. All right, let's talk a little bit about Brexit. British Parliament voting today to take the Brexit plan away from Theresa May, which I guess opens up everything to they could vote <laughs> on another referendum, they could vote to leave without a plan. But Wall Street doesn't seem to be all that concerned about Brexit. No, neither of the European markets nor the Asian markets. And the reason for that is that global markets are looking to the U.S., the U.S. economy, the U.S. consumer, as goes the U.S. consumer and the U.S. economy, so go the global markets. I think Brexit is still a very confused sea state. Uh, tonight's vote only makes it more confusing, more confounding. Sooner or later, we'll know what the deal is. But uh, even at that point, I think global markets are going to take their cue more from how our economy is faring than what the U.K. is or is not voting on. Well, and speaking of the U.S. consumer, we're going to get some information on the U.S. consumer later this week, right? We do. End of this week, we get both the final revision to uh, fourth quarter GDP and then consumer income, spending, saving, sentiment and confidence. And as I said, as goes the U.S. consumer, so goes the markets. Well, that'll be an interesting report in the wake of the Mueller report being, uh, being well, not released, but a four-page summary released. Correct. Jim Lowell, Advisor Investments, Newton, Massachusetts. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Brian.